Okay, so let me emphasize what uh, I said yesterday. The notion of inner products, inner product spaces, more generally non-linear spaces. This has relevance to practical notions like approximation and uh, convergence. These uh, these will be made uh, mathematically precise a little later. Okay, so we are only trying to develop the uh, background material for that. Okay. Let us also recall cauchy schwarz inequality. I want to give uh, two examples cauchy schwarz inequality in an inner product space. Okay. Modulus in a product uh, xy. This does not exceed the product of the norm of x and the norm of y. This is true for all x, y. The right hand side norm comes from the inner product. Okay, so let us just uh, remember that again. What does this inequality say with regard to the three inner product spaces we have seen before? In particular, we have the following. Look at uh, Cn for instance. I'll call it one. Summation uh, j equals one to n. Uh, I'm using xi, yi bar, and then I take the modulus. This is the inner product of two vectors in Cn. This does not exceed norm of x into norm of y. Norm of x is summation j equals one to n mod xi square to the one by two. Into norm y, a similar expression. Summation j equals one to n mod y j square to the one by two. Okay. This is uh, one particular case. Look at uh, what happens to the inner product space uh, C n cross n with the trace inner product. Trace of uh, a b star modulus of that this is less than or equal to norm a norm b norm a is trace of uh, a a star to the half norm b similar expression trace of b b star to the half finally if you look at uh, the infinite dimensional example infinite dimensional inner product space c01 we have the following modulus integral 0 to 1 in the product xy f of t gt bar dt modulus of this does not exceed the product of uh, norm f norm g what is norm f norm f is integral 0 to 1 mod ft square dt to the 1 by 2 the second factor is 0 to 1 mod gt square dt to the 1 by 2 okay inequalities are important uh, when you discuss notions of approximation convergence etc so you will uh, encounter these if not in this course some other course so these are specific uh, instances of the cauchy schwarz inequality okay we have seen yesterday that uh, the notion of a norm can be introduced for a vector in an inner product space more generally we have the following that is a norm need not be induced uh, through an inner product one can uh, have a general general norm linear space a norm on a vector space v is a function it will be denoted by these two parallel lines i am sure you must have encountered this it's already there in in a product spaces it's a function from v to r unlike the inner product which can be a complex number so this 
is a function from V to R such that the following conditions are satisfied norm of uh, x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in V and uh, this goes along with this norm x equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 0 condition 2 is uh, again a condition that we have seen in the context of an inner product space norm of uh, lambda x is mod lambda norm x for all lambda in let us restrict uh, let us look at the case of a complex vector space. So, I will uh, take the scalars from C for all x and v second condition third condition is uh, just a triangle inequality norm x plus y must be less than or equal to norm x plus norm y. A norm, a norm on a vector space is a function that satisfies these conditions. A vector space together with this norm, with a given norm, is called a normed linear space, normed vector space. A normed linear space or a normed vector space. Vector spaces are also called linear spaces. A normed linear space uh, is uh, a pair. It's a pair uh, v comma some norm. where uh, this is a given norm on B okay and so every inner product space is a norm linear space every inner product space is an example of a norm linear space it is a subclass. is a normed linear space with respect to the induced norm just to recall uh, norm x is the positive square root of the inner product of x with itself. Okay. What is also important is uh, to observe that uh, on a given vector space you can define several norms on a given vector space you can define several norms and what can be shown is that uh, not all norms are induced by an inner product. Okay. Now let me give you uh, at least two different norms on uh, C n for instance these uh, will also serve as uh, examples of norm linear spaces consider uh, V to be C n with uh, the two norms defined as follows I will define two norms with respect to which C n becomes a norm linear space one uh, is called as the one norm sometimes called the absolute value norm. So it is it goes with the, the subscript 1 norm x goes with 1 this is uh, summation j equals 1 to n mod x j where the usual convention is uh, that uh, x1 x2 etc xn are the coordinates of x this is called the 1 norm this is uh, 1 norm and uh, Yeah, all that I am saying is that this satisfies you can verify that this satisfies these conditions okay. So, C n with uh, this norm is a norm linear space there is also called uh, the so called supremum norm or sometimes a maximum norm this is uh, equal to the supremum of um, actually it is maximum okay. there are only finitely many numbers here maximum of mod x i 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n. maximum of the moduli of the coordinates of the vector x this is called uh, 
the infinite norm or supremum norm maximum norm cn is a norm linear space with respect to both these norms okay cn already has a norm with respect to the standard inner product induced by the standard inner product okay in numerical linear algebra one would like to ask uh, questions like whether these norms are equivalent okay we will not deal with those but it is in that context uh, you would uh, like to know whether norms are equivalent if norms are equivalent then see a norm linear space can be shown to be a metric space dxy equals norm x minus y then uh, with respect to this metric we can ask questions about convergence then the question is if it is uh, if a sequence xn is convergent with respect to one norm should it be convergent with respect to another norm and this is related to the question as to whether two given norms are equivalent okay that is why it is of interest to know different norms on the same space and different norms uh, have different uh, um, diff different norms are suitable for different applications for example when uh, we do calculus uh, it is the it is a stand it is a norm induced by the standard inner product it is called it is called the two norm or the euclidean norm okay let me write that also it is called the euclidean norm or the two norm that is from the standard inner product so can you tell me what uh, the two norm is j equals 1 to n uh, so uh, norm x square okay that is uh, mod x j square this is called uh, the euclidean norm or the two norm uh, in calculus it is a two norm which is important whereas in uh, you know robot tra trajectory planning etc it is a infinite uh, norm that's used okay so di different applications uh, ask for different norms the question however is we need to go back to this question the two norm is induced by the standard inner product what happens to these two the claim is that these two are not induced by any inner product okay these two are not induced by any inner product how do you prove it in order to prove it uh, the following result is uh, useful it's called the parallelogram law which holds in a vector space so let me state and prove that and then uh, i will leave it uh, for you to verify that these two norms are not induced by inner products by any inner product okay parallelogram law let me state that uh, here and prove it there in an inner product space let uh, v be an inner product space then now we have the following this the rule that i'm going to write is uh, motivated by what we have seen in two dimensions even three dimensions norm of uh, x plus y the whole square plus norm x minus y the whole square you can think of x and y as two dimensional vectors on the plane vectors on the plane then if then x plus y is the length of one of the diagonals x minus y is the length of the other diagonal the sum of the squares of the diagonals must be two sides two times the sum of the square of the sides two times norm x square plus two times norm y square for all x y this law holds this is uh, the parallelogram law in an inner product space this holds where the norm is of course the norm induced by the inner product okay so if v is an inner product and this is the norm induced by the inner product parallelogram law holds if i have a norm linear space where the parallelogram law does not hold then it cannot be the norm cannot be induced by any inner product that is what uh, you should use to prove that these two are not induced by any inner product you have to take sample vectors x and y calculate these numbers and verify that this law does not hold for these two norms okay i'm going to leave that as an exercise 
these two are not induced by any inner product that is an exercise but let me prove the parallelogram law rather straightforward you simply look at uh, see this is in, induced by an inner product so you need to use that look at norm x plus y the whole square plus norm x minus y the whole square this is inner product uh, of x plus y with itself plus uh, inner product x minus y with itself just expand and simplify x with x is norm x square y goes with y for norm y square and uh, you have a y x and uh, an x y the second term gives you norm x square plus norm y square minus uh, y with uh, x minus x with y so you get uh, you get the right hand side this is 2 times norm x square plus 2 times norm y square okay so that proves the parallelogram straightforward but it's uh, still powerful in uh, showing that uh, certain norms uh, are not induced by any inner product so the exercise for you is uh, show that uh, the one norm and the infinite norm are not induced by any inner product the context is cn you also have similar results uh, for uh, the space of continuous functions over 0 1 so the space of continuous functions over 0 1 there is a two norm induced by the inner product which uh, i have given there but there are other uh, other norms that can be defined on uh, on c01 so let me also mention on c01 i'll define two uh, norms similar to the one norm and the infinite norm on c01 norm f the one norm is uh, any guesses uh, about uh, what this is f is a continuous function over 0 1 this is similar to the one norm integral mod f integral 0 to 1 mod f t d t f is continuous modulus is continuous so the integral exists similarly the infinite norm what is the infinite norm supremum supremum of modulus of f of t t in 0 1 the supremum exists because uh, f is continuous mod f is continuous composition of two continuous functions so there is a maximum and a minimum i want the maximum so in fact i can replace supremum by the maximum so with respect to these two norms 1 and infinity c01 is a norm linear space it can again be shown using the parallelogram law that these are not induced by any inner product okay okay so let's move on these are some of the uh, basic uh, notions one of the motivations for uh, an inner product space is uh, uh, that it uh, should allow us to generalize the notions of uh, the usual dot product the notion of angle between vectors in particular orthogonality okay let's look at uh, these notions so in particular i want to look at uh, the concept of an orthogonal basis and uh, orthonormal uh, basis i'll simply say orthonormal sets okay the notion of orthogonality so it is done through the inner product so this definition is natural let uh, v be an inner product space
take two vectors, uh, vectors x and y, uh, then uh, x is uh, said to be perpendicular to y, perpendicular to y or uh, x is said to be orthogonal to y. If uh, the inner product of x with y in this fashion is 0, okay. Okay, if x if the inner product of x with y taken in this manner is 0, then the inner product of y with x, y first, x next, that is also 0 because of the conjugate symmetry, okay. So then we can say that x and y are orthogonal can say that x and y are orthogonal to each other okay for a subset a contained in v is called uh, orthogonal a set is called uh, an orthogonal set if uh, distinct elements are uh, orthogonal distinct uh, vectors distinct elements in a are uh, mutually orthogonal if distinct elements in a are mutually orthogonal zero vector is the only vector that's orthogonal to itself that is if a comma a is equal to 0 then a is 0 that comes from the positive definiteness of the inner product orthogonal we need something more a is called uh, orthonormal if uh, a is orthogonal and each uh, vector uh, in A has uh, norm 1. Each vector in A has norm 1. So, such a set is called an orthonormal normal set that is for uh, every A, B in A we must have uh, the inner product of AB is 0 if uh, A is not equal to B, it is 1 if A is equal to B. So, we write like this. Mm. Distinct vectors uh, are orthogonal and each vector has norm 1. So, such a set is called an orthonormal set. Do you have examples of orthonormal sets? Look at the vectors uh, that belong to the standard basis. But before that, I'll give another example. Consider the following vectors: u1 is uh, 1 minus 1, u2 is uh, 1 1. These two vectors form an orthogonal set, not an orthonormal. These two form uh, an orthogonal set. not orthonormal because uh, they do not have norm 1. Norm of u1 or u2 is in fact uh, 1 by root 2, sorry just root 2, u1, u2 both have uh, norm root 2. On the other hand, uh, if you look at the standard basis vectors. The standard basis vectors uh, in C n are uh, orthonormal in fact. Just to emphasize uh, what uh, the standard basis is, look at uh, E 1, E 2, etcetera, E n. 
where uh, e i is uh, 0 0 etc 1 0 0 0 where this occurs in the ith coordinate this is an orthonormal set This is this probably the simplest orthonormal uh, set uh, one would encounter. I want to explain uh, a procedure. The, the, the question is the following: Given a linearly independent set, can we can we get uh, can we construct an orthonormal set out of it? Okay. The answer is yes. But before that, we must uh, understand that orthonormal vector orthogonal vectors are linearly independent. Okay. But even before that, I want to prove uh, Pythagoras theorem. Then I'll come to this Pythagoras theorem, which uh, holds we have seen in in the plane, holds in a general uh, normally uh, general inner product space. So I want to prove this and then look at uh, the process of constructing orthonormal vectors from an independent set, linearly independent set, Pythagoras theorem. the setting is an inner product space so if uh, x y belong to an inner product space such that x is perpendicular to y then uh, the inner right triangle uh, there is a hypotenuse there are other two sides look at the square of the lens of the other two sides that sum is equal to the length of the hypotenuse norm x plus uh, y square is norm x square plus norm y square okay just to recall if this is 90 this is x and this is y these are the lengths okay I think I should use alpha beta numbers then this is uh, alpha square plus beta square alpha and beta are the lengths norm x norm uh, y are the lengths of the sides this holds in a general inner product space I will leave the proof okay you have to as 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 before start with norm x plus y whole square use the inner product and one line the proof uh, okay so the high school uh, notion of Pythagoras theorem you see uh, holds in a in an abstract inner product space okay I told you that uh, orthogonal uh, vectors are linearly independent let me prove that let us recall the following let uh, V be an inner product space and uh, let me take uh, this as uh, a basis I am considering a finite dimensional inner product space B equals uh, let us call the vectors u1 u2 etc un let this be a basis of V okay so it is a finite dimensional inner product space given a it is as before it is an ordered basis okay it is an ordered basis that is u1 is the first vector u2 is the second vector etc un is the last vector so that when we write down the matrix of a linear transformation or the matrix of a vector we know what is the first component second co component etc so this is an ordered basis it means that uh, any x and v can be written as uh, ordered basis uh, see when you write down the matrix uh, of uh, a vector then uh, it is always done with respect to a basis that is this x there is a representation this x can be written given this basis this x has the following represent unique representation alpha 1 uh, u1 
plus alpha 2 u 2 etcetera plus uh, alpha n u n where the numbers alpha 1 alpha 2 etcetera alpha n are unique for this x okay and we always deal with the standard basis uh, for the reason that we will have occasion to talk about the first coordinate of x second coordinate of x etcetera when we do matrix operations. So it is natural to call alpha 1 as the first coordinate of x alpha 2 as the second coordinate of x etcetera. Do you remember this that we used to write the matrix of uh, x relative to this uh, basis uh, then that is a column vector coming from the first term coefficient of the first term coefficient of the second term etcetera. Now what is to be understood is that this sum does not change if you alter the first and the second term for instance but when you write down the matrix of uh, the vector corresponding to the basis it does make a difference okay. So we will always have in mind that this is an ordered basis so there is uh, a first coordinate second coordinate etcetera. So this is an ordered basis I have this representation as I told you these numbers alpha 1 etcetera alpha n are unique for the particular x that we started with okay. How do you compute these numbers given a vector x do you remember how we compute these numbers alpha 1 etcetera alpha n in a general vector space see u1 u2 etcetera they do not form an orthogonal basis orthonormal basis they, they form just a basis ordinary ordered basis so how do you find uh, these numbers solving a system you can write this as uh, okay see x is given I need to find these numbers so what we do is look at the matrix whose columns are u1 u2 etc un and then I want to determine the numbers alpha 1 alpha 2 etc this left hand side is uh, given I know what x is I want to determine the numbers alpha one, the coefficients of x relative to this basis I know what this is this is also given the basis is of course given I need to determine this this is unknown so this is essentially solving a linear system of equations so you need to do elementary row operations and then determine the unknowns from the system of equations okay now that is we know that is that takes a little effort in the case of a so to determine the coefficients of a vector x you need to solve a system of uh, linear equations but if this is not just a basis but an orthonormal basis then this step is very easy that is the advantage of uh, an orthonormal set an orthonormal basis by the way what is an orthonormal basis a basis which has the property that the vectors are mutually orthogonal and have uh, each uh, have norm 1 is an orthonormal basis if this is an orthonormal basis so in addition if B is uh, an orthonormal basis then this computation immediate there is no computation involved okay. it is immediate then we have the following okay I will go back to this equation alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 etc alpha n un I take the inner product of x with uh, ui i runs from 1 to n then this is uh, alpha 1 u1 ui plus etc alpha i ui ui etc plus alpha n ui okay how do I write uh, the terms u1 u2 etc the first I am taking on the right yeah so u n ui since it is an orthonormal basis all terms cancel except this one all these are 0 this is 1 and so this is alpha i and so the coefficient alpha i is determined as inner product of x with ui so the coefficients can be computed by multiplication the dot product by the dot product immediately but uh, 
the price you have to pay is the computation of an orthonormal basis from a linearly independent set it is just a basis ordinary basis it is a linearly independent set there is some effort involved in uh, going from a linearly independent set to an orthonormal basis there is a there is a there is a naive process uh, gram schmidt uh, procedure numerically it can be modified but we'll simply look at the gram schmidt procedure uh, that tells us how to go from a linearly independent uh, set uh, to an orthonormal set so once you do that certain computations become easier okay i told you that orthogonal uh, vectors are linearly independent can you see that happening here immediately in general orthogonal if x is 0 that is if i take a linear combination of the vectors u and etc u and equate that to 0 then is it clear that uh, you come back see that the coefficients must be 0 so an orthogonal set is linearly independent not conversely any orthogonal set uh, there is no orthonormality that we are using here any orthogonal set is linearly independent <coughs> any orthogonal set is linearly independent but not conversely that the converse is not true has been uh, exhibited already you look at those vectors 1 uh, minus 1 1 1 I am sorry they are linearly they are orthogonal okay you give an example okay that is easy linear independent vector 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 okay they are linearly independent but not orthogonal okay so this means uh, we need to look at the procedure that uh, takes a um, that takes a linearly independent suit, uh, to an orthonormal basis this is called the gram schmidt procedure so let me discuss that uh, next so we have uh, what is called as the gram schmidt orthonormalization process okay what is this process uh, i'll state that as uh, a result let uh, u1 u2 etc be uh, a linearly independent set in an inner product space space v so i start with uh, a linearly independent set in inner product space then I can construct then uh, we can construct an ortho normal set we can construct an ortho normal set I uh, will denote that by v1 v2 etc remember uh, this can be an infinite set so you can apply this to an infinite dimensional space c01 for instance we can construct an orthonormal set v1 v2 etc which satisfies the following such that see for one thing it's an orthonormal set they are mutually orthogonal and the norm of each vector is 1 there is another thing it satisfies such that the following holds look at the span of uh, u1 u2 etc uj for any j you can show that uh, this span is the same as the span of v1 v2 etc vj for each j okay step by step that is look at the span of uh, u1 that is the same as the span of v1 span of u1 comma u2 is equal to span of v1 comma v2 etc for every j these two subspaces of v are the same okay the proof i'll uh, complete the proof today 
the proof is by induction. The proof is by induction on J. Okay. To apply the induction principle, uh, you need uh, a basis step uh, and then an inductive step. Okay. Basis step. Take the case of uh, J equal to one. J equals one. I have the vector U one. I must show how to construct V one such that span of U one equals span of V one. Okay. But remember that we start with a linearly independent set, so this u1 cannot be 0. Any vector that contains a 0 vector is linearly dependent. Okay. So none of these vectors is 0, u1 is not 0. So I can divide by norm u1. So I will call v1 as the vector u1 by norm u1. Norm u1 is not 0 because u1 is not 0. Then this v1 satisfies uh, the requirements for one thing norm v1 is 1 and uh, you do not have to take another vector to take the dot product etc there is this is the basis step there is only one vector what is also clear is that span of uh, u1 is uh, span of v1 that is because v1 is a multiple of u1. Anything that is uh, in the span of u1 is a multiple of u1 that is obviously a multiple of v1. So these two subspaces coincide. So the basis step uh, holds. So we apply the inductive step. Suppose that, suppose that uh, v1, v2, etc., vn have been constructed. Such that, uh, such that span of uh, okay, such that uh, for uh, one thing uh, this is orthonormal. Okay. Such that okay, I want to write that again. Suppose this is orthonormal, and uh, this condition also must hold span of u1 etc un is equal to span of v1 v2 etc vn so you assume that uh, you are able to construct n vectors then you must show that uh, you can do it for n plus 1 vectors then by the induction principle it follows uh, that this can be done forever indefinitely okay I need to give a formula for Vn plus 1 then we are done okay given V1 etc Vn I must tell how to construct a Vn plus 1 that is done as follows consider uh, the vector it is a new vector that I will define I have n vectors V1 etc Vn I define a new vector Wn plus 1 as uh, let us take uh, Un plus 1 the one that we started with and then subtract the following sum j equals 1 to n take the inner product of un plus 1 with uh, each of the vectors that we have constructed each of the vectors v1 etc vn that we have constructed vj and then take the dot product of that with vj there is a geometric significance to this but uh, this can be explained only a little later Okay. Remember u1, u2, etc. That infinite set is given to us. So I know what un plus 1 are. I have computed v1 up to vn. Only those I am using here. So I delete this from the vector un plus 1. The first observation is that this is not uh, wn plus 1 is not the 0 vector. Can you see that? If you can see that, then I can skip that step. wn plus 1 is not the 0 vector. How do you prove? As usual, by contradiction. If Wn plus 1 is 0, then this vector is 0. So, what is the contradiction? If Wn plus 1 is 0, then Un plus 1 is a 
yes u n plus 1 can be written as uh, this sum it is a it is in the linear span of v 1 v 2 etc v n but v 1 v 2 etc v n the span of that is equal to this which means u n plus 1 is a linear combination of these contradiction to the fact that uh, okay, we started with this is a linearly independent set so no vector can be written as a linear combination of the previous vectors so this cannot be 0 so w n plus 1 is not 0 it makes sense to talk about the norm w1 and then uh, divide that by uh, divide a vector by that so i'll do something that is similar to the first step call vn plus 1 as uh, wn plus 1 by norm wn plus 1 this is well defined because the denominator is not zero the claim is that uh, this vn plus 1 obviously has uh, norm 1 but the claim is this is orthogonal to the vectors v1 v2 etc vn okay then we are through almost for one thing norm vn plus 1 is 1 how are they orthogonal how was vn plus 1 orthogonal to the previous n vectors that is uh, that follows from this formula simply look at uh, vj comma vn plus 1 okay look at vj comma wn plus 1 vj comma wn plus 1 so this is uh, i am uh, doing it uh, for the first argument so using this formula it is vj comma un plus 1 minus summation j equals 1 to n uh, that is the first argument so this will go with a complex conjugate so can you see that uh, this is what we have summation j equals 1 to n the complex conjugate un plus 1 uh, vj oh this is okay i need to change this the summation index is j i'll call this uh, l so this is l this is j this uh, with respect to this so that's v l v j is that okay the summation index is j i do it for all l l is fixed l is fixed l runs between 1 and n L is fixed, L runs between 1 and n. I am looking at the inner product W n plus 1 with V L, V L in the first argument. So V L with U n plus 1, V L with this. Now this will go out with uh, a complex conjugate, V L comma V J. Is that clear? J is a running index, L is fixed. This is 0 if J is different from L. So all terms are gone except the term corresponding to j equals l when j is equal to l this is 1 this becomes u n plus 1 v l with the conjugate that is v l u n plus 1 that gets cancelled with this so this is 0 okay so v l is orthogonal to w n plus 1 for our l so how do i choose l this is true for all l such that 1 less than or equal to l less than or equal to n so w n plus 1 the new vector is orthogonal to v l all right but since v n plus 1 is just a multiple of w n plus 1 it is also orthogonal to the vectors v 1 etc v n. So v 1 v 2 etc v n together with v n plus 1 this is uh, an ortho normal set. The last uh, point is to verify that the span of this is equal to the span of u1 etc un plus 1 okay just consider that i will prove one inclusion the other one is similar look at span of uh, v1 v2 etc vn vn plus 1 this span is contained in i will keep the first n vectors v1 v2 etc vn and observe that vn is a multiple of wn plus 1 so instead of vn plus 1 i can use w n plus 1 okay but uh, when i write w n plus 1 i observe 
just go back to the formula w n plus 1 is a linear combination of u n plus 1 and uh, the other v 1 etcetera but that is a linear combination of u 1 etcetera which means w n plus 1 is a linear combination of u 1 u etcetera u n u n plus 1 agreed. Yes. V j u n plus 1 for j equals l because all terms are gone except j is equal to l minus. No real number, it is a complex number. See you take the conjugate but then uh, inner product x comma y bar is uh, y x. So this becomes V L U N plus 1, this is V L U N plus 1 so it gets cancelled okay. Is this step clear? V N see this, this step is obvious I am sure because V N plus 1 is a multiple of W N plus 1. On the other hand W N plus 1 okay you tell me if this is clear what I am trying to explain is this is a linear combination of V1, V2, I am again writing V1, V2, etc. Vn, Un plus 1, do you agree? That is because Wn plus 1 is uh, with regard to, you can write it in terms of V1, V2, etc. Vn and together with that you append Un plus 1, so this is fine. But V1, V2, etc. Vn, span of uh, these vectors is equal to span of u1 etc. So this is again contained in span of u1, u2 etc. un, un plus 1 okay. So this is one inclusion. I want to show that the span of these two sets uh, are the same. This is one inclusion. The other inclusion is similar. You can simply retrace the steps. you can simply retrace the steps okay that completes the proof. We will look at uh, some examples uh, next time and also applications of the Gram-Schmidt process in uh, a certain optimization problem okay so let me stop here.